Good morning. Welcome to Trinity United Methodist Church. We are glad to see you all here on this Lord's Day, a day in which we give thanks to God for all of God's blessings. I'm Joseph James, the senior pastor here, and I'm surrounded by a great group of volunteers and staff who help this church love and serve God and others from the heart of Sumter. We're glad that you're here today. We invite everyone to please sign the pew registration pad that's in the center of your, the, the aisle here on this end and pass it down so that we could keep a record of the attendance that we have and receive any kind of updates on uh, addresses or anything like that that you may have wish to share. Please look in our bulletin. There are plenty of announcements there about the furniture sale. I do want to, uh, that tomorrow, I also want to highlight the uh, Touch a Truck event that is next week, right after this 11 o'clock service. We'll be in the fellowship hall. We'll be learning a lot more about our children's ministries. It also will be a covered dish. We invite you to come and uh, learn a little more about children's ministries and also about ways that you could serve and help and get a good meal. That's also the Touch a Truck event as well. So we hope to see you following worship next Sunday down in the Fellowship Hall. Our church conference is week after next, the 25th. Uh, we will only have one service that day, and it will be abbreviated, uh, about 30, 45 minutes long, and then at the end of it, we will have our church conference that is for the sole purpose of consideration of our long-range plan. Uh, the a couple of meetings that are this week, our Youth Ministry Task Force meets Thursday evening at 6.30, and Nominations meets today at 4.00. Um, you will hear more about this. Paula will share a little bit more about this, about our prayer time that we're opening to our church and to our community this coming Thursday evening at 515. Uh, the Youth Ministry Task Force starts at 630, so there is time for us to gather and pray for the space and for the ministries of Trinity United Methodist Church and also to pray for our community. Towards the end of our time together, we will gather uh, at the corner of Liberty and uh, uh, Council for a time of prayer for Sumter. Uh, and then our chapel will be open for you to, to come and pray. So Paula will have a little bit more about that in just a few moments. My friends, we invite you to stand and greet one another in the name of the Lord.
please join me in the call to worship, which you'll find printed in your bulletin. The congregation's response is in the darker print. The heavens declare the righteousness of God. From the rising of the sun to its setting. And join me in the opening prayer, which you can find printed in your bulletin. O God of promise, creator of the cosmos, you are the first light breaking through the void, and the final light we shall eternally enjoy. Keep our hearts ever vigilant as we wait to welcome you, that you would find us clothed in love, dressed for action, and eager to receive you. Amen. And now Leighton will come and read the epistle reading, if you reading, if you will remain standing for that. The epistle lesson comes from Hebrews chapter eleven, verses one through three and eight through sixteen. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place 
that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven, and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on earth. For people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. Thank you. You may be seated. And now I'd like to invite the children to come forward for the children's message with Mr. Max Jackson. Good morning, boys and girls. Come on down. It always amazes me sometimes how things work out in the worship service. The scripture that Leighton read this morning is exactly the same scripture that I based my talk this morning on to the children without me knowing what he was going to read. Isn't that something? I want to ask you a question this morning, and it's sort of a question like a riddle. What is something you cannot see, but you can feel it? Congregation, you think about that too. What is something you cannot see, but you can feel it? Well, let's do a little experiment and see if we can figure it out. Put your lips together and blow out. Come on, try Put your lips together. Now you blew air, didn't you? But you couldn't see it. Now I want you to put your hand in front of your lips and blow on your hand. Come on, put your hand up and blow. Congregation, you too. Now you couldn't see the air, but you could feel it. And that's the way I think about God. The invisible air and the invisible God. Now, air is all around us, and God is all around us. His love is everywhere, and air is everywhere. So when I think about air, I think about the love of God all around us. And I want you to think about this week. You know, when you go outside and you look at a tree and you see the leaves move, that's air. You know the air is there, but you can't see it. So I want you to think about this. You know God is there, but you can't see it. But through your parents, you can feel his love. Would you pray with me? I will say the words and you repeat them, please. Dear God, thank you for loving us all the time. We love you. Amen. Thanks for coming.
we read our gospel lesson from the center of the congregation. Because God, like air, is closer than we imagine. I invite you to read with me, to pray with me, if you will look in your bulletin, the prayer of illumination. Before we have this reading, let us pray the prayer of illumination together. God of hope, by faith we know that you created the world and that what is seen is made by things that are not visible. Open our eyes to your presence among us that we may hear your word with clarity and sureness of hope as we follow you in all our righteousness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Hear now the Holy Gospel of the Lord as it comes to us from Luke chapter 12, verses 32 through 40. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will have them sit down to eat and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn, he and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had come, had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You almost, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. May God bless the reading, the hearing, and the understanding Of this, the Word of God. Thank you. Please be seated. Will you pray with me? Open our ears. Pass the concerns of the day. Open our hearts. Pass the fears that haunt us. Open our minds past the anxieties and stubbornness of ourselves. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable unto you, O God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Many of you know that Franklin Roosevelt used those words in his inaugural address in 1933. It was a dark time in this country, the days of the Depression, many Americans, too many Americans out of work. It was an anxious and troubling time. 
I think if Roosevelt were around today, he would use the same words. For we in this world, in this country, in this community, face many, many things that make us all anxious, if not fearful. The economy, our paycheck, our retirement are often controlled by forces of a global nature. Tariffs and taxes and stock markets, oh my. There is an abundance of violence in our world. Violence that victimizes the youngest among us, even in little old Sumter. Human life seems to have no value. We see political, social, and religious strife tearing at the fabric of our nation. And I'm not the only one who wonders, I'm sure, what kind of world we're leaving for the next generation. Then, of course, there are all of our individual fears, apprehensions, and anxieties. You may have a phobia, you may have a fear of heights or spiders, but I suspect that's not really what drives us. Our individual fears sometimes are of not being good enough, a fear of failure, a fear of death. It's just to name a few. We all have fears. Preachers have fears. As if it weren't dawning enough to stand here each week and look at this blessed congregation abounding in love and grace. There are days that we read scriptures that speak of selling possessions and giving alms to the poor. Preachers fear sometimes preaching those words. One fear is that people will automatically close their ears and stop listening because it thinks it doesn't apply to them. Preachers fear that people think that because the preacher is talking about money, the church must be near insolvency and about to go belly up. Preachers like me fear that there are those who hear words about money, about giving alms, and they will feel beat up because they're already giving to their financial limit. And then we fear that those among us who need to hear the word won't. And sometimes fear keeps us from speaking the truth. But by the same token, Sometimes, more often than we give than we'd like to think, fear keeps us from hearing the gospel. We read the scripture, we read and hear the scriptures that we heard today about being ready. And we think, oh my goodness, here comes the preacher. He's going to tell us that we've got to do more in our already busy, busy, busy lives. We hear about giving and we are afraid that we might not have enough for ourselves if we give any more. We might not be able to make that debt loan payment that we need to bank and we worry about our future. Our fears keep us from speaking 
and listening. Isn't it a tragedy how our fears and anxieties work to keep us from hearing and proclaiming God's word? And yet, despite all of that fear, despite the agendas of fear that come to us and keep us from hearing God's word as fully as we would like, yet at the very center of the gospel is the good news, is the grace of God found in many places throughout the Bible. But here it is today. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom of God. Despite our fear, it is God's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. Good pleasure, not begrudgingly. God gives not as a harsh taskmaster that we have to fear. God gives not because we have mastered all of our fears and therefore we have earned grace. No. God wants to give us the kingdom. Just as God gave Abraham and our spiritual ancestors the gift of faith, that's what Leighton was reading about, about how our spiritual ancestors used faith each day to meet the challenges, the fears of each day. Now, some days they did great and some days they did not. But they always returned to the grace of the Lord. And yet, as we hear and claim it is God's yearning desire to give us the gift of faith, it is wrapped in these beautiful words. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. How many times have we heard those words, fear not, do not be afraid, or some variation thereof? I can remember on Christmas Eve as the shepherds are watching their flock by night. The angel of the Lord appeared before them and said, fear not. It happens at the empty tomb. Fear not, do not be afraid. And today, fear not, do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom of God. We've been given a gift of love, a gift of the kingdom itself, if we care to claim it. And it is God's good pleasure to give it to us despite our fear. And because God wants to give us the kingdom, we are free. We are freed. We are free to claim it, but we are more importantly free to look at the things that cause you and me fear. We are free to look at those things that keep us from hearing and claiming and living the gift. We are free to look at our own fears and anxieties, to name them, to look at the hold that they have on our lives. Our fears keep us in denial. And naming our fears is the first step in claiming the gift of the kingdom and vanquishing the life-robbing fear that haunts us. We've been given the kingdom. So we are free to ask the question, what are the fears and anxieties that keep you from living fully as a child of God? As an individual, 
in the quiet of your heart, what, what is the fear that, that strikes you in the middle of the night? The fear that strikes you when you hear a challenge to your soul? Are you afraid of your past? Are you afraid of failing? Are you afraid of what people might say? Are you afraid of not making a difference? Afraid of what you might lose? Are you afraid that you will not measure up, keep up with your friends and neighbors? Are you afraid of being uncomfortable? Maybe your fear is one of these or something that I did not name. But the question is important to ask because our fear keeps us from claiming the gift, claiming the identity, claiming the reality of our place in the little flock of God. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And you know, that would probably be enough, but in our world today, we also need to think about what it means for us as a church. What are the fears that we have as a congregation? As a church together, what are our fears and anxieties that keep us from living fully as the little flock of God? Are we afraid that we won't have enough money to do what we're supposed to do? Are we like that third servant in the parable of the talents? We bury our treasure because we feel overly responsible if we lose it. What are we afraid of? Are we afraid that we won't be like the church we were in 1975? Or do we look around us and in some subjective and unfair comparison decide we're not as good as some other church in the community where our friends and neighbors attend? Are we afraid that we will lose members if we do the right thing? if we follow the leadings and lessons of God? Are we afraid to dream God's dream, afraid to be open to God's vision because it might mean something different than we're used to, something different than what we want? Oh, my friends, our prayers can drive us to be less. Our fears can make us cower in the corner and miss the fullness of life as a church, as individuals. Missing the fullness of the greatness of God's gift of the kingdom. God's vision, God's gift to us is more abundant than we can imagine and far greater than the smallness of our fear. as individuals and as a church. The question is, are we going to operate out of our fears? Or out of the gift of faith we are given as the little flock? The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And Jesus said, do not be afraid, little flock, 
for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. This time I invite you to turn to page 38 of your hymnal. I believe I've got the right page number. Yes, page 38. I'm going to invite Beth Louder to please come. Join me here at the front. Many of you know Beth. She has had family that is out of this church and for a while Beth was in the ministry but now Beth wants to join Trinity United Methodist Church and so I invite you to turn to page 38 of your hymnal we're going to receive Beth into our local congregation here at Trinity and I'm going to ask her these questions and then we're going to do the commendation and welcome together Beth, as, member, as a member of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? I will. Thank you. Now this next little part, friends, is very important. It's called the commendation. I commend her to you as I commend every child that we baptize, every member that we receive because you are making vows just as Beth did. And so I invite you to hear these words. Members of the household of God, I commend Beth to your love and care. I implore you, I ask you to do all in your power to increase her faith, to confirm her hope, and perfect her in love. And the congregation responds. God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and in peace. Beth, I welcome you to this congregation. We are glad that you are here and a part of us. And as we are ending our service today, I invite you to stand in the vestibule there and receive the greetings of this congregation. And at this time, I invite the congregation to show your affirmation of Beth's desire to join our congregation. Will you show your affirmation? Thank you, Beth. And now I'd like to share some of the joys and concerns that we have in our congregation. Let's start with the joys. I know that at least one of our members and his dad is famous now because he is a world champion baseball player. And so congratulations to Clark and Byron Kenny. And if there are others that I don't know that are on that team, congratulations to you as well, but I do know them. Um, also, as Joseph said, this coming Thursday at 515, we'll have a, a prayer walk and service. And so I don't know a whole lot more about it than he told you, but I know that we will gather here. Um, I encourage you to come. This is a great opportunity to put into action the covenant that we just renewed with Beth. And we're thankful for her. We're also thankful that for the opportunity to listen to what we just said. Before you leave here, open the hymnal and go back and read it again. And take these opportunities that come up to support the church, to support the community, to support the long range 
um, plan with our prayers this Thursday as you're able. Come if you can't get here at 515. If you can't walk all through the church and all around the grounds, come. The chapel will be open, but we'll give you instructions when you get here. We'll have a great opportunity to witness, to show our love for our community and for the Lord out in the street. Sumter needs us to pray for them right now. Sumter needs to see us. They need to feel us praying for them right now, this community. So I invite you to come. Um, I'll be here. I hope Joseph is here. But I hope to see a lot of you here. Tell your friends and neighbors. I don't think it's in the, in the bulletin. It'll probably be out in the, the update that comes up. It is on the Facebook page if you, if you want to read on the Trinity Facebook page. Um, if you're not on Facebook, find somebody who is. Also, um, Ms. Emily Stroman is in the hospital. Um, she's up at Toomey, and M is taking care of her dad at the house. I think she's um, got her hands full with them. Um, they've, they've been having a build, bit of a challenge, both of them, so please keep Ms. Stroman in your prayers. I think that the last I heard, things were going better, and that hopefully she'll come home tomorrow. Um, also, I won't name who, but somebody came up to me a little while ago and said they weren't feeling well and they were going home. So um, just keep that person in your prayers as well. As we start, as we join together collectively this morning to pray our morning prayer, I'd like to invite you to just take a few quiet moments to center yourself on God. Just bow your heads, close your eyes, Clear your mind and open your heart. Please join me in prayer. O oh Lord our God, you have told us plainly in your word not to be afraid, that you are with us and that it is your good pleasure to give us your kingdom. You've told us to be ready, watchful, for you are coming. Help us, O oh God, to hear your word, to be ready, to be dressed for the action of love and service. Make us instruments of your mercy and bearers of compassion. Hear our hearts, Lord, and heal us. Free us of our love of earthly treasure. Give us faith like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And forgive us when we fail to be obedient, when our faith is lacking because of what we cannot yet see. Hear our prayers, Lord, for those that we love, for those who are absent from us, for those who are ill, for those who are seeking, and for those who need us to be you for them. Make us be doers of your word. Bring us together in peace in this world. Make it so, O oh God. We pray these things in the blessed name of Jesus, our Christ. Amen. Jesus said, sell your possessions and give alms. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Honor God with a sacrifice of thanksgiving and come into his courts with praise. Will the ushers please come forward?
Let us pray. Lord, there is no, no scarcity in your grace. There's no recession in your kingdom. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will use these gifts that others may come to know the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Use these gifts, O oh Lord. May they be enough, not for us, but for you. We ask these things in your name, O oh Lord, for you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Do not be afraid, little flock. Go and stand on the promises. Go and be the children of God you are called to be. Go in peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.